Hello guys, welcome back to SandVFX. Welcome to another exciting refire tutorial on SandVFX. So this is what uh, we are looking after today. Uh, ground collapsing scene using refire. So the pieces are falling down and we can see there is a, a hole below the ground. I've got some another example a little bit different. Okay, you can see it around here. So you can also see that there is a kind of like hole or crater thing and uh, particles are bouncing against that okay since this is a terrace we won't have anything like that but we'll have a whole our uh, room below it so uh, I created another one with sorry okay like this having a bigger hole like this one okay so we'll get into 3ds max and start doing that so first of all let me load up my background uh, the footage that we want uh, I'm just using a simple image so I don't need to track or do anything okay files okay here is my p image okay okay let me press alt w to go to full screen for our perspective and now the next thing is I need to match up my grid with the perspective okay you can see now it's matched up Okay, you can use this line as a reference to match it and you don't need to do it too perfect uh, it will be fine mm, just a little bit okay now I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is create a box just create a box on the surface where you want your fragments to happen or where you want your ground to collapse okay and let me go to modify panel and set my height to maybe negative 4 I don't want my uh, box to get up of my surface and remember your surface will be this grid line and okay okay again I messed up with this one okay, let me just create a camera control C to create a camera from this view so that we have the camera right here we are looking through a camera and I can go back to perspective mode I can move anywhere I like and then I can get back to my camera view again by pressing the C key on the keyboard or you can also change it from here camera's camera or perspective okay once that I have created my box the next thing I'm gonna do is let me first get rid of this image right now for the timing okay because I have already set up my camera so I won't be needing it for a while okay <coughs> now that I've created my box I need to texture this box at the beginning if we fragment it before texturing it then we'll have lots of pieces and it'll be really troublesome for texturing and also this scene is a pretty simple scene uh, let us see the file right here okay this is the file what we're using and you can see the floor is pretty much gray color it's just something texture like here but we'll be covering all those parts with our fragments so we won't need to do that hard texturing mm, job just I have just this plain uh, concrete simple concrete image right here I'll be using that simply and let me press M key to open up my material editor and on the diffuse channel bitmap now let me browse to okay files and this concrete texture okay and let me simply apply it to this object and also associated material in viewport now you can easily see a uh, simple material no need to do too much work on texturing it won't be too notice noticeable okay now next thing we gotta do is create a multi sub object material uh, multi sub object so that we need to apply uh, another dif little bit different color into our fragment pieces later on so first of all let me convert this to editable poly and s select my top face go down oops, sorry go down here and ID it's that's too it's fine and let me select all the other faces and set their color or set their ID let me not select the bottom one okay only the side one and let me set their ID to 4 so all of them will have ID 4 and the bottom one it will be 2 that will be fine okay so we have the top and the bottom one with selection ID 2 
and decide one with selection 94 or you can also set them to 3 or anything you wish for okay so we'll drag this um, our material let us uh, rename this one uh, texture and let me drag this material to my selection ID tube right here instance okay get rid of this polygon again then for the selection ID for you can just use simple gray material that won't make any difference okay and for the selection ID 1 let me go to standard and create a little darker color darker gray okay if you have something other like if you are making it for a ground and you have got uh, s mm, uh, mud or something like that you may need to texture it as well but uh, in our case um, it's uh, really easy we don't need to do mm, that much of work okay now I'm just applying this material to my object okay now let me again load up my background use file again I don't need to do anything I don't need to load because it has been previously loaded so just press OK OK now we have got this let me go to camera view OK press Alt W to go to all four views and on the front view I want to go to perspective view so that I can look at the perspective work on the perspective while looking at this camera view as well so let me zoom up here and I'm gonna do is go to rendering environment and let me just set up my environment map for this terrace only just for the uh, temporary timing just to check how it are, it's going on let me just render my scene you can see that we just have this box sitting at the top nothing like uh, it has been integrated into the scene so first of all let us do that uh, let us create a simple skylight okay create and I'm not going to cast shadows, turn on this cast shadows right now because that's going to slow my render. Or we can also do that and reduce the ray sample to maybe 5. And if I render again, now you can see that it has been a little bit bright, but still we can see this depth of our box over here. So what we need to do is we need to cover it and make that all these parts we have got a plane and it is kind of like underneath this ground. So for that, what we need to do is we'll create another plane. Uh, let's go another plane right here. Okay, something like that. And it must be right top of our box. It will be because we have our box right on the grid line below the grid line. So our plane will be right on the grid line. Now what I'm gonna do is convert it to editable poly and just cut the hole right into this box area. Okay. 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 You can also zoom in right here and try to match it up a little more perfectly. Okay, for this one as well. Let's see. Okay, it's quite good. Okay, and now uh, for down part as well. It's around here. Okay, and for this part as well. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to face and delete all these faces. Okay. Now let me go get back to my camera view and let me render my scene. Now, as you've noticed, you'll see this green plane right here and our box in the middle. So you are not seeing any depth right now. So, if by any chance we could just um, make this uh, green plane cover this depth, but not render that only. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We won't be rendering this green object, uh, sorry, green plane, um, but it will still hide our depth of this box so that it will be seen as if it has been integrated into our scene. So how are we gonna do that is, let's go to the material editor and load up a material called matte shadow. So what will this do is, it will only render shadows in this uh, in any of the object where it has been applied so let me press F3 uh, to turn on my shaded mode and let me apply this to my this plane okay and if I go ahead and do a render right now 
Now you can see that we don't have any depth of our object right here and also we are not seeing any green plane as well. So we are correct, we are doing everything perfectly. Okay. So still you can see that the texture is not matching with our ground but uh, that's gonna be fine. We'll fix that while compositing in After Effects. Okay. So we are done with uh, covering our depth and everything like that. Now the next thing is gonna be we're going to fragment our box. Okay, let's go down to Rayfire, Rayfire open Rayfire Floater. Go to objects, add in my box. Okay. I can also hide this plane for a while in the side selection so that it will be easy for me. And let me go to physics. Uh, what I need to oh sorry, I need to go to fragments. Let me make about 500 pieces and if you want you can go more maybe about 600 but it will slow down my computer so I'm not going for too much of fragments the 500 will do it for the demonstration just fragment it okay now we have got uh, quite a good size of 500 pieces of fragments okay the next thing let me clear this for a while I'll add some of the objects later on and let's go to camera view and see what we have rendered before since we have these edges uh, looking like it is not in the scene uh, it's not matching up with our floor texture so what are we gonna do is we are going to select all the edges uh, fragments and exclude them from being shattered or from being, being collapsed also why I'll explain it in a little bit later just first of all let me do what is let me select all the edges fragments like this okay and for this one as well okay 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 once that I've selected my all the edges fragments uh, let me go to perspective for easy viewing okay and also let me press the J key to turn off these selection brackets they are bothering me okay now what I'm gonna do is I guess I need to select a little more from here as well okay and I have selected this camera tip let me deselect that okay and let me go ahead and group them and I'm gonna name it static so that they are not gonna be part of my simulation also why I did that is because if you make all these pieces falling down then we'll have this sharp edge uh, like collapsing uh, let us see in our scene right here oops sorry okay uh, here you can see that we have got these um, pieces as if they are falling if we make all the pieces fall down then we'll not have this kind of edge right here we'll just have flat rectangles so that's not gonna look good so now if we make all these pieces fall down like let's say if we pick this up right here so you can see that we'll get this sort of result so I hope you got what I am trying to explain <coughs> uh, the next thing is going to be uh, let me create a wind in order to activate my geometries Okay, and let me go ahead and set it spherical and res indi range indicators let me see if my size is good that's uh, quite a good size let me reduce it a little bit okay and pull it back for now this side okay now uh, let me go to ray fire again uh, get back to ray fire Rayfire floater and let me add in my wind to my simulation property right here and all the object except my static fragments static with that which I grouped a little bit while ago so let me select all of them this select my wind and this static group so now you can see that we have only the fragments which are not grouped are selected and add them to my dynamic list okay now the next thing is going to be is we're going to animate this wind so that it will feel like our floor is collapsing from this point to this point right here. 
So let's set my timeline first of all to 150. Maybe I won't be needing that much, but still. Uh, let me auto key, set key. Now let me first of all go to about 80 frames, around 80 frames, and let me pull this all the way up to here. Okay. Now let me go to about 10 frames, uh, no, uh, maybe 15 frames or 20 frames, and pull this right this way. And also go to 30 frames. Just make it kind of like zigzag so that it will not be like a straight one and it will look a little more better. Okay, just a simple zigzagging, nothing too fancy here. So, okay, from right here also. No, I think I need to increase my wind size a little bit more. Okay, around right here. Oops, sorry. I need to turn off auto key before doing that. Okay, that seems good. A little bit more again. Maybe 23 will be good. Okay. Now let's go to our ray fire floor again and uh, let's see some of the settings. Let me deactivate my static dynamic object. Otherwise, as we start our simulation, our object will start to fall. I'll show you what I mean. Let me do a preview without turning that option on. Now you can see that the pieces are starting to fall before the wind hits it and all the pieces are falling at once. So we don't want that so we're going to deactivate our dynamic objects and we're gonna activate it by force that's our win okay and if you have anything else no I don't think we have anything okay now we can just go ahead and do a quick preview okay okay it's um, looking pretty good it's working correctly but I think the pieces are falling down really too fast. So let me just cancel it. And let me go ahead and reduce my wind strength to maybe 0 0.1. I just need to activate my object. I don't need any strength on my wind. So let it that be. And let me go ahead and make my simulation. Okay, if you need to adjust anything, you can just do that. Um, but I think it's pretty good for now. So let me just make my simulation. Okay, uh, we won't be needing any 150 frames. Uh, 100 frames is enough for us. Okay, so now that we have baked our simulation, it's looking good. Now the problem here is gonna be is, let me just render my scene, and you will see that the pieces are falling down, but still we are seeing this uh, below surface right here because we have not covered that with anything and also our pieces are falling forever down so if we had something like hole it's not interacting with that hole it's falling down from that crater or something like that as well like the one you can see here okay you can see that they are bouncing off this crater right here so for that what we need to do is create a crater or something like that since it's a terrace we'll have something kind of like a room or something below there so first of all let me go down here, select all my fragment pieces. Oops, they are really below. Okay, and let me turn press F4 so that I'll see which objects are not selected. Okay, select all of them, go to front uh, first frame, and delete all my keyframe. Okay, so that we won't have any animation or any baked animation. So, next thing what we are gonna do is create a virtual room for our fragments to collapse down so let me go ahead to standard primitives and box and create a pretty big room something like this okay okay I need to set my height to negative let's say 50 will do I guess let's see in the perspective view okay it's too small so let me go to uh, 
negative 200 okay now that's good and also I'm going to reduce the length a bit and pull it back okay now I'm going to go ahead and convert it to editable poly and delete this top face right here okay and also add in a shell modifier shell just a little bit I don't need too much maybe just two okay now in the rayfire I need to s add my this room or this to my static object and then go ahead and bake my simulation okay we are uh, having our baking and you can now see that uh, the f uh, fragmented pieces are interacting with this floor or this down room was here okay let uh, it be baked completely okay we are done with our baking and um, let me toggle full screen right here okay now let me unhide uh, unhide by name and unhide that plane an uh, earlier plane okay and let me just go to my camera view and render my scene now if you see, okay, this part was not covered with that plane, so we are looking this yellow part right here. And you can see below here that before we were seeing this floor right here, but right now we are seeing this uh, yellow color box that we created. So that means we can create an entire room below here, right? Um, place some furniture around here, put some pictures around here, like wall pictures or anything, and it will seem like as if uh, these pieces have fallen down into the room so you can even create uh, something some characters falling from here such type of effect with this and you can just set up entire room below this so that's what we can do or if you are doing with uh, something like uh, ground or open area somewhere around then you may not want to create this type of big hole you may want to create something greater like this one so it's pretty easy create a simple plane and you can just uh, push or pull, add some segments and push or pull some vertex and create that easily. Okay, and let me just uh, pull my plane a little bit so that I can cover all the parts. These parts here as well and this part as well. Okay. Now I'm gonna select my this yellow box and give it a black material diffuse and a black material so if you have an entire room it'll be in the room colors whatever it is but I'm just gonna set it black and if I render it now okay now you can see that it's actually looking like as if it is a hole okay let us go back somewhere around here and let's do a preview another preview okay uh, everything's looking pretty fine set these edges right here so we'll uh, fix them in compositing apps so that once that this is done uh, let me go to in uh, rendering environment and let me not use this map again so if I render I'll have a black background right this like this okay now I can just uh, render my scene okay from here okay you can just increase the ray sample for the skylight to 10 or 20 something like that because on 5 you'll get some noise on your image so you can just increase that to 10 or 20 but it's really gonna take some time to render and you can just uh, save your file I prefer TIFF uh, you can choose any of the formats except JPEG because it does not support I mean you can choose any format that supports alpha channel uh, let's say TIFF and set somewhere around desktop wherever you want okay and you can also go to setup and don't forget to store off click this uh, store alpha channel right here 16 bit color or 8 bit also it will be fine because we don't have any lots of colors in uh, into our scene okay and you can just save just render your t range or active time segment and select SGTV whatever size you prefer and hit render Okay.
and now let's uh, move into After Effects let me load up my previously render sequence I don't want to waste time again rendering that okay my render sequence right here I did render it from 23 frames because before that in my previously there was nothing happening so um, let me check my TIFF sequence and open and straight on matted okay now I have this uh, TIFF sequence right here also I'm gonna load up my background right this one okay and let me create a new composition on to 0 by 720 about 5 seconds I don't think I need 5 seconds also but uh, let that be and I'm gonna drag in my terrace right here since it a, it's a image it's really large so I'll just scale it down holding the shift key so it will be of same proportion below as well okay since we cannot match it up perfectly the aspect ratio does not match for this footage and sorry for the composition and for this image now I'll just drag in my ground sequence okay you can see it's on the floor now and if I scroll down it seems as if it is integrated except for this edges so we'll fix that first of all let me just trim my composition just about here trim my composition okay now let's go ahead and create a mask around our this um, ground sequence layer okay let's go to all the way back here so that we can see which parts are not falling down okay. it's full let me set it to half okay okay now that we have cropped that let me select my ground layer and hit mm twice and then let me add in some feather it also let me reduce my expansion a bit okay now it can it's looking as if there's no any seam around here and what we're going to do is add in a curves for a little bit of color correction because our footage or this ground footage is a little bit too gray than our scene so let me go ahead and add in a little bit of green to my scene also a little bit of red since this seems a little bit of yellowish in color and let's go to RGB a little bit I think green's too much just a little bit touch nothing too much um, let's see for the blue as well okay that looks good uh, I guess it's not too much matched uh, let me reduce the red a bit okay okay now that we can see our full floor is collapsing okay that's looking pretty good okay that's what concludes our tutorials for today um, the one thing I missed uh, in this tutorial for this one is well we are and this is the case where we have this uh, floor and that's just a simple gray color so we don't have to texture our pieces upper part but what if we are doing a uh, ground or something like that which have some grasses and some sands or mud different colors then we cannot use this simple gray color it will look uh, really ridiculous so in that case we need to texture them and I hope in next tutorial I'll show you how we can texture such types of floors or such type of grounds where we have uh, kind of uh, grasses and rocks or something like that it can be done using the camera map pixel map per pixel in 3ds max I'll show you that in my next tutorial soon I'll be publishing tutorial on that one as well so I hope uh, you guys enjoyed a lot hope you guys have learned something and sorry for any mistake I have done and thanks thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe thank you